welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm doing a review of this week's options trades on the Gap Options newsletter using an advanced trader risk, which is what I risk. Of course, you could risk less um, if you want to take a $500 risk or a $200 risk or a $300 risk or even more than I'm risking, you can do that. It depends on the size of your account. And again, how many trades do you want to take? This was an average week for us. The win ratio was 83%. Total profits, this is with an average risk of $8,000 per trade. And again, that's a lot. This is an advanced trader risk. You do not have to risk that much. But the total profit, $68,400. So let's go over this week's trades. If you have any questions, you can obviously email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can always follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And again, one of the reasons that I love trading is because, or trading options specifically, is because you can capture overnight moves. And we did that this week in a few of the trades that ended up being huge winners. But everything that I do is based on my Golden Gap rating system. If you understand what I do, I think it helps you make more money. But if you don't and you just want to take the trades, you could literally take the trade, buy the put, for example, and then put a sell order at 50%. Walk away from it. If it hits, it's a limit order. It'll hit before four. If it doesn't, you're in the trade overnight. If you don't really want to micromanage your trades looking for the targets, that is what I suggest. If you're busy, if you're working, if you're doing something else during the day. Now, I'm here. I'm looking at my charts. And even if I'm not, I always have my phone with me. And anybody can look on their phone. And people now are trading from their phone even, putting orders in. But I do have targets in the newsletter. So I, have, I put targets in the newsletter that helps you focus on when you should be looking to get out. So this week, this particular week that expires today, uh, was a good week. So we had six trades, one loser, five winners, and again, 83% win ratio. I hope next, this coming week we have lots of trades, and I hope everyone is a winner. We'll see. Earnings season begins this week coming up and so the banks start reporting on July 14th it'll be exciting time to trade to really see how the financials act during this earning season but if you're interested in trading with me now is a good time to get involved because of the fact that it's earning season soon so there's lots of gaps and lots of big movers the biggest trade this week actually was an earnings trade so this is with an advanced trader risk of $8,000 per trade profits this week 68400 again I'm looking to have a big month this month so we're off to a good start here. And it's particularly since this was a holiday week, um, I'm thrilled about the ones that we had that were movers. So on Monday, we did Tesla, uh, the 240 puts. This went pretty quickly. Again, I try to send the trades out before the open. If I can, sometimes I'll say something later and send it. But most of the trades, I'd say 85, 90% of the trades are sent in the pre-market. Cost of Tesla was 550, 15 contracts cost 8250. Again, your risk should be similar on every trade. This is not an exact science. Do your best. Again, I'm usually getting the trades pretty fast. Profit $6,750. And again, this was a return on investment at 82%. So let's take a look at the chart. This close here, gap down, rallied, dropped. Again, this was on Monday the 26th with an expiration of the 7th. So sometimes I will. Um, you know, do the weekly. Sometimes I will do two weeks. It really depends how I'm looking at the stock, how I'm looking at the move, how I'm looking at the market, and also because we have a holiday. So when, when we have a holiday time, I'm trying to focus on what is the best way to price it out, knowing that we could be slow over the holiday. This ended up going right away. You know, you don't, you don't always have that. I'd say in the best case scenario, everything goes the day that I call it, or within 24 to 48 hours. But that's not the case in every trade, to be honest with you. Um, so this was one of the ones that went pretty fast. And, and it's amazing looking back now, the price of this today compared to where it was the day that I called it. Uh, Tesla starts out, has earnings, I believe it's in July, it's at the beginning of earnings season. So it will be interesting to see really how this ends up reporting if it continues higher or if this breaks down again. CBS was a loser this week. While this could drop again today, I don't think it's gonna go right. I killed it yesterday. Uh, if you wanna hold it into the last day, you can. It could have turned around. It just never worked right. I don't know why it didn't. It just didn't. So I sent this on the Tuesday, the 27th, the 68 puts that expired today. Again, you could still be in this trade. I saved a little bit yesterday, got out of it. I did not take more than 60 contracts of this though, because I thought something was off with the pricing. So I, I could have actually taken about 15, 20 more, but I, 
I didn't like the way it was priced. I did the train. I, sh I should have just killed it, actually, looking back now. It just, it should have gone the first day that I'm thinking about. Let's look at the chart. There was something wrong with the price of that. It should have been, it should have cost more. Yeah. But actually, I mean, I look at the second day. Yeah, I mean, this should have gone here. But then the next day, this looked good. And then it was really day three. And I don't remember what that was worth day three. I don't, a day three, I don't even think I could have got out of it with half. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't, though. But anyways, this lost. This lost, no matter what you do with it. And some people do kill the trades with a half loss. You got to watch them then if you're doing that. Uh, I, I don't, but if you want to be tight and micromanage trades that don't work the first 24 to 48 hours, you could kill it at half loss or you could just kill them. Or if it's just down half, you could kill it. Again, I do not do that. But if you want to be tight with your money management, you could. Baidu was a good one that we did on Thursday, June 29th. We did the 135 puts. Again, nice, solid mover in the Baidu. Pretty cheap too. 225, 40 contracts, risk was 9,000, sold at 380, profit was $6,200, again, in and out. 69% return investment. I think 50% is a good return on investment if you're consecutively, consecutively booking winners. There are some trades that I hold, for, I hold for more based on the gap rating and based on other things too, like the market, which we're going to talk about in a couple here coming up. But this was a nice trade. In fact, this is probably still lower. But anyways, closed here, gap down, fell, boom, went through the strike. Went through the strike the day, the day that I called it. And again, time of the day was before the open. So as long as you're at your desk before the open to get the trades we're doing that day, you can set it up, get ready to do the orders, and take them in the first 5, 10, 15 minutes of the day. I try to get in pretty quickly. I will say that. I'm not messing around. Like, I'm not doing this an hour after the open, okay? Nike was the big one, though, for the week. Nike was earnings. Nike was good. I knew Nike was good when I got up in the morning and rated the gap at 6.41 a.m. I sent the trade out on Friday the 30th, even into a holiday week. I knew this was a great gap, and it went huge. So we did the 109 puts. Everybody made money in this that did it. Um, cost was so cheap, 30, 75 cents. I, I think you could have even paid like 30 or 40 on that day. Again, I got in pretty pretty quick. Because I knew I liked it, and you just don't know how fast it's going to go. Anyways, 100 contracts with a risk of 7,500 sold at 475 it was insane. It was an insane trade. It's probably still even falling today. I mean, it's just, you, you would still be up money in this today, the last day. But I don't know why anyone would still be in it. Profit was $40,000 with a $7,500 risk, 533% return on investment for Nike. Why was this so good? Number one, the gap rated extremely well. Remember, I have a sliding scale of 26 points being the best rated gap. 20 is a cutoff. But the higher the rated gap, the better the move. Number two, this trade worked the second it came out, and every single day you were up in it, followed through. And again, my take on the market for this week, you know, prior to today, I saw what happened this morning with the econ out. Prior to today, my take on the market for this week was that we would fall, fall over the holiday week. That no one's going to be buying this market into the holiday week. So, again, if you get the help of the market, you can hold something for a larger move. Again, whether it's a put or a call. In the case of Nike, it was a put. So, this was a really nice mover. Worked the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, and again today, this is still up. It's just so far through the strike. So nice to see this in a precursor to earnings season. What a fabulous gap. And, in fact, I'm going to probably watch that next week. Then we did NVIDIA, which was a 425 calls. This is rallying today. I don't know what this is worth today, but I'm already out of this. Uh, call this on Friday the 30th at 10.02. Cost was $6, 15 contracts, $9,000 risk, sold at 9.50. It was a good trade. In and out, bing, bam, boom. Um, didn't go as fast as I wanted to, to, but it's still rallying today, and actually I wanted a pop in it. That's what I wanted. I wanted a pop. I got the pop, and then I got out. Here was the day I did it. Stock close here gapped up, rallied. Here was the 30th. Here was the day before the holiday when the market was dead. And then the pop came after, boop. And then it went through the strike and I exited it. But this is rallying today. So I, I don't know where this is going to go today. I did not do anything new today going into a weekend for the holiday week. But this was up this morning and it was well through 425. So this this might be worth more than I got out of it today. I don't know. But it's it's it was a nice mover. Then the next big trade after Nike was Mew for the week. The 63 puts, and I did this late. 
I did this at 12 o'clock on Friday. I should have called this before the open. I was so busy and I just didn't even see it. And then I saw it. I said, oh my God, this is going to go. So we did it. I said, this is going to rock and roll. 90 cents was the cost for this. 100 contracts. Risk was 9,000. Sold at 240. This trade was a big trade. And again, Nike was the biggest this week, but a profit of 15,000, a risk of 9,000 is an awesome trade. Awesome trade. Half this, if you had risked $4,500 and taken 50 contracts, you would have made $7,500. I didn't look and see what this is doing here today, but a beautiful, beautiful winner. And again, called it here. Boom, boom, boom. Got out of it on the Thursday. Again, when you're up that much in a trade the day before the expiration, you never know something could turn around. But this was eh, not as far through the strike as Nike, but still far enough through the strike that I didn't want to, you know, miss the profit. And again, a good trade. A fabulous trade. So for the week of July 7th, this week, win ratio was 83%. There were five winners, zero break even, one loser, and six trades. Average risk per trade was 8,000. And again, profit 68,400, and the average return on investment, including the loser, was 152%. Again, there are weeks where we do 10 trades, 20 trades, 15 trades, more than six. But considering the fact it was a holiday week, I was thrilled, thrilled with the results this week. So, you know, you will have busier weeks in this. I don't know if we really have any slower weeks on this. I mean, probably five, six trades a week is on average. But, I mean, there are definitely weeks where we have busier weeks than this. But it was a very profitable week. I'm happy for that going into earnings season. It's a great start to July. And if you want to sign up, don't wait. If you're thinking about trading, if you're thinking about doing this, if you're thinking about signing up for the newsletter, then uh, don't delay. Because earnings season starts soon, very, 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 very soon. It's in a couple of days. So it's a good time to trade. It's a great time to trade. And if you're thinking about joining, now's the time to do it. You know, you have to know how to place an options trade. That's something that you have to do yourself. Um, and then if you want to take the class, you can learn it. But if you want to sign up and just get the trades, you can. A 12-month subscription is $69.99. A six-month subscription is $49.99. Again, the trades are emailed to you. You can be anywhere in the world and get the trades to your email. You just have to have me set up on your alerts to be able to have them go right into your inbox. But if you want to take the class, you can sign up for the class. It's July 22nd and 23rd. You will learn the entries, you'll learn the targets, you'll learn the exits, and you'll learn my rating system. Ultimately, training is about making money. And as crazy as it sounds to make money and be busy in the summer, we are. July and August are a busy time to trade. I say you have to chunk it out. You should not hold every trade to a piggy target. You should also not get out of every trade too fast, in my opinion. If you're new and you're a beginner and you've been losing and you're making money, you want to get out of things quick, fine. You gotta hold some things, but not everything, okay? And again, that's the benefit of doing the class, you learn that. If you wanna trade for a living, part-time or full-time, I say start out with the options newsletter. Start making money with the newsletter. Prove to yourself that my system works and you're making money doing it, you'll see, you'll see the moves. You'll see if you get out of something too early and you're like, crap, I should've held it. Or if you didn't do a trade and you're like, oh my God, I should've done it. Like a couple people emailed me, they didn't do the mute. I don't know why, but they didn't. And it worked and it was a good trade and they missed out on the money. But making money is a big, big part of trading. So think about it. Think about what you want to do. It's all about profits. And of course, financial freedom. If you're interested and you want to learn how to take care of your own finances and yourself, then you have to take charge of your own money. And you can't trade the market really without help. But one of the benefits is that you can trade from home or work. So if you want to learn my system, it's called the Golden Gap. The Golden Gap system is a 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. This checklist tells you what to trade when and what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias and a stop. So that's the meat and potatoes of my class, really, the value in it. And if you want to join, you have plenty of time to plan. It's July 22nd and 23rd, two weeks from now. It's $69.99. Everyone pays the same. Eastern time, 9 to 5. Class is online. If you want to do the trends course, I offer a combo deal, which is $74.99. This is the 25th. And then the Golden Gap, you do the 22nd and 23rd. Email me if you want to sign up for the options newsletter. Email me if you want to sign up for the course. And have a great day, everyone.